Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have a very exciting video. It's been exactly one year since my tummy talk, which is crazy that I'm even saying that. So I figured we would just kind of do a one year post-op, like reflect back any questions I've been asked. I'll answer some of those, do some before and afters, all the things you wanna know. So make sure to like and subscribe if you're new here. I'm Janie, by the way, and I'm so happy you're here. So to give you a little bit of a background, I decided to undergo a tummy tuck about a year ago, like literally exactly a year ago. And it was something I thought about for a while now. When I was younger, I had a pretty significant weight loss. I lost about 70 pounds. And before even having kids, I had loose skin. I had lots of stretch marks. I was just always really uncomfortable in my skin. And then, um, I had my son and obviously, you know, like your stomach expands and I gained about 60 pounds when I got pregnant with him. And after I had him, I lost a lot of weight very, very fast. I lost the 60 pounds, like probably within six months. And then I lost even more. I was just like not at a healthy point in my life. I was doing like, I think like at least three miles every day, if not more, I was doing like an hour in the morning on the treadmill, an hour in the afternoon. I was eating like 1400 calories. Like it was not, I was not doing it the healthy way, but I lost weight really fast and I just was not happy with myself. And I don't even know if I could find any pictures, but I was just kind of like, I looked thin, but like not a healthy thin. Like I had no muscle tone or anything like that. And it was really hard to maintain, like really, really hard to maintain. And then after that, my weight kind of fluctuated. So like after I had him, I really wanted to get a tummy tuck, but I was like, oh, you know, everyone says you should wait till you have kids. I went in for a couple of consultations. It was expensive. I was young. I knew I wanted more kids. So I put it off and then I had Ava and I was just like, all right, like it's something I really want. So I went in for a consultation, which was a year. And I was like, no, I'm not ready. And then when she was two years, I was like, okay, like I guess I'm like getting close. And I was like, can I book it for a year out? <laughs> The doctor probably hated me, who I used Dr. Nagy in Wall, New Jersey, and he was great. I was just like all over the place because it's like a big commitment. Like, you know, you're going to be pretty much on bed rest for the first two to three weeks. Like you're not doing much of anything. And then it's like a six week recovery before you could like get back to normal activity. So it's like not something to be taken lightly. But I just had so much loose skin and it was almost kind of disappointed because I always wanted to show off my results from my weight loss. Like I always felt like I worked so hard to lose the weight. And like at this point, after I had Ava, I started doing strength training. I did a reverse diet. I was eating healthy. I was maintaining my weight. I was at a weight I could maintain. That was the biggest thing too. I like maintained my weight. And that was the one thing with the doctor when we booked the appointment and I was coming back in a year, he was like, I don't want you to lose any weight this year. Just focus on being at a weight you may can maintain. So that way, after you get it done, you're not fluctuating up and down. And I loved that too. So I just wanted to be able to like show off my results. Like I felt like even though I lost weight, I just always was hiding my stomach. And I was so self-conscious with it. There's, I just had so much loose skin that like I would tuck it into my pants or when I would sit on the side of the pool, like I would just always wear high-waisted bathing suits and I was so insecure because like you could see it under the bathing suit. Um, and it was just something for me. Like I just knew at that point I was doing it for me. Like I wasn't doing it to it look good for anyone else, impress anyone else. It was literally for me. I'm like, I busted my butt to get into shape and like this is just one thing that was kind of holding me back. So that's really why like I knew I was ready. I knew I was at a place that I wasn't like going on fad diets, losing a lot of weight, gaining it back. Like I knew I was kind of living my healthy lifestyle already. And I spent the year working on like really loving my body. Like um, if you follow me on Instagram, like that year, that was pretty early though. That year I really focused on like body confidence and like wearing things I wouldn't normally wear. So I felt like I was at a really good place. Um, I just have notes. <laughs> so I feel like, what do you keep looking at? I literally wrote notes. So I stay on topic because I always go off topic. Okay, I'm gonna put up like a side by side before and after, but I also wanted to show you guys this way. So this is what it looks like. So you see when I bend over, there's no loose skin there or there, which is crazy. I still have loose skin on my eyes and my inner thighs. Like that's just from weight loss. That is what it is, the weight loss age, whatever. But I'll show you my scar. So I really, it's pretty low. I feel uncomfortable even doing this. It's really not that bad at all. Like I don't mind it 
whatsoever. My belly button's a little scarred too, but I'm just a year out, so it still has time to get better. But I am so, so happy with it. Like, I am so happy with my results. I never thought I would have like a flat stomach where I could like bend over and there's like, that's crazy to me. There's no skin hanging over. It's just insane. So yeah, so I wanna, I'll show you like some photos before and then some photos after, but it's seriously incredible to see how far I've come. Like, I am so happy with the results and I'll do a side by side of like a year ago to now or before to now. It was a lot. So like, let's talk about the surgical procedure. I documented pretty much everything. Like I have, if you go back on my channel, I have the day I went in for the tummy tuck and the day I came home and Dave was really cute. He helped film a lot of it. So I do have that all and I'm happy I have that. So that's great for resources if you wanna look back. I also have on my Amazon, a whole thing on my Amazon storefront of tummy tuck essentials of like everything I use. Like you need a recliner chair, an automated one. Is that what it's called or electronic? Like you don't want one you have to kick to get up. You want one that like you push the button and it gets up for you. Um, that was like my biggest thing. I lived in that thing. So the surgery itself, like I don't remember any of that, but I remember when I woke up, I was just shaking. Like I was in so much pain. I was just kind of confused. My body was in shock and I really am like sensitive. I have a low pain tolerance and I am very sensitive to a lot of like just vitamins, medicines, prescriptions. I get nauseous really easy. So like, just keep that in mind. Like I'm a baby. <laughs> so after, the surgery, I was just really out of it. I was just shaking, the ride home was just awful, awful. Not to scare anyone, but I wanna be brutally honest. And I couldn't wait to just like get home and get settled. I was walking like, you're completely hunched over. Like you cannot stand straight at all. So I was completely hunched over. I was holding Dave, I had two drains and I went right into the recliner, took every medicine they gave me, like, and they gave me a sheet, which I'm pretty sure most doctors do. If they don't, like, you should really write that down yourself of everything I'm taking and exactly what times. Like, I don't even remember, because I know some were muscle relaxers, some were um, to help with the pain, some were, I think, an antibiotic too, but you want to make sure, like, you are taking everything. And at the time, because I did not want to feel <laughs> any pain at all. The first two days were literally a blur because I was just so tired and so groggy. I was sleeping so much and I was not getting up or down much. The only time was to go to the bathroom. I don't even think I went to the bathroom that much because I was just scared. I did need Dave to like help me off the recliner the first two days because even though it went up, like pushing yourself up like that, you don't realize you use your core for everything. So like pushing myself up like that her, um, even like going back to forward. If you have a low toilet, you wanna get one of those toilet seats that makes it higher because sitting down and then standing up. I just had on a binder. I know some people go home, like I believe my best friend went home in a Faha. Um, I didn't have one of those. I just had a binder like that Velcro so you could take it on or off. The drains were just a pain in the butt. The drains did not um, hurt though. They were just more a pain in the butt. You had to drain those every day. I did stock up on Benadryl and at night because my binder was getting so itchy, but then it also puts me to sleep. So at night I would take Benadryl. I was taking melatonin too because I was sleeping so much during the day. And then at night I was like wide awake and I was like, I just want to sleep this through. I don't know if I would recommend that, but it helped me, so I did do that. And take a stool softener because with anesthesia and everything, you get so backed up. And the last thing you want is to have like stomach cramps or anything like that. So I did take a stool softener the first couple of these until I had to go and I really recommend that too. I really recommend having someone with you at least the first week. I had Ava who was three, she was two turning three. So she was pretty much three at the time. So, cause I couldn't pick her up and I really thought after a week I would be fine. But that first week, it was great because she could still come up to like my recliner chair. Um, the first week she was very cautious with me. She could sit on the bed right next to me. So she was still there, but I was no help at all. Like I could not do anything. So really you want someone there to help you the first week. After the first week, I started getting up and like moving a little bit. You're still hunched over. It's painful. You get really tired very easily. The drains are the most annoying thing. They didn't hurt, but it was just annoying to have them clipped onto everything. And Ava was really, it was a good age for me to do it with her because she was very mature and 
she understood pretty much like, oh, mommy can't pick me up. And she would lay, like she was really good at during this time. She would lay down on the bed. She would climb up and lay down so I could change her diaper. And luckily my husband worked local so he can come home. And like, I just had a lot of help, which was really nice. And at that time too, like a lot of Ava's things, like I just prepped, so that was easy. After a week they, or two weeks, they said I could start driving again, which I don't know how, because I just didn't feel ready. I don't think I started driving until like three weeks. I was just very like sore in the car and like turning the wheel and things like that was sore. But at like three weeks when I did, when I got the drains out, I remember I drove myself, so maybe it was two weeks. That was the first time I drove because I drove myself to get the drains out because I was like, I'm not waiting for anyone. I want these things out. And getting the drains out to me, I'm a baby when it hurts, hurts, comes to pain, it really didn't hurt. It wasn't anything. If anything, in my head, I thought it was gonna be really painful. So I expected the worst and it wasn't that bad. But then after that, I started that week, I had to bring Ava to school and stuff. So she was going to school and she was really good at like climbing in her car seat. So things like that, like I couldn't pick her up and put her, like you can't lift anything at that point over like five pounds, I think. So I couldn't pick her up and put her in her car seat, but she was really good. Got it? Okay. Okay, climb down, up and down. Okay, Ava's the hero. So depending, like, you know your child, depending on your child. And there was also some days where she would like cry and like get upset and I couldn't like pick her up to console her. And that was like the hardest thing. But she, I have to say like, we didn't really have any struggles with her. Like she really listened to me when I was like, okay, you have to get in your car seat. I think she just knew. So I did get lucky with that. But like some days when I was bringing her to school, Dave would come home and take a break from work. And I was like, hey, can you just help me like get her out of the car or get all of her bags? Um, Cause it was just an adjustment and not being able to pick up a toddler is a lot. So that's if you have a toddler, if you don't, then that's okay. But I guess even if you have like a dog or an animal, just know if they like go out, you can't like bend down and pick them up. You couldn't even like, you're not even really supposed to do dishes and bend down and pick things up because you don't want to use your core at all. Um, and it's just, you don't want to force yourself to stand up straight too soon. You want to take it easy. So that was hard too. Like just knowing like I couldn't do things around the house that I wanted to do. Like even laundry, like Dave would put it on the, um, we have uh, like an island. He would put it like on the island so I could fold it so it was high up, but, like just the bending down stuff. I The cost of my surgery total was just under $12,000, but keep in mind this was in 2000, oh, it was 2023, because it was the first week. Um, and I booked it a year prior, so it all depends. And I had a, just a tummy tuck. I had just a tummy tuck, but I know like, the anesthesia, the surgery, like that was included with everything. Like it was the tummy tuck, the surgery center free fee, the anesthesiologist, all of that. So like you have to factor, I don't know how it works in other places. So, and it depends what else, like if you have anything else done, like what you need. I did have, set. I had six inches of separation. So I always forget the word for it, diastis rectus or something. Um, so they did repair that insurance doesn't cover it. So it, nothing like nothing was covered by insurance. But the best thing I did was book it a year prior. So I saved up the whole year. I also wanna say like my confidence has risen since getting this done has skyrocketed. Like I've always been extremely insecure and I'm still pretty insecure with things. But just the fact that I don't have that loose skin and like we, I remember the first vacation we went on, I sat by the edge of the pool talking to Dave, which is something in a bikini, which is something I never would have done. Like I never, I feel like even in a regular bathing suit, I would have like a blanket or a cover up or something like a towel or a cover up over me. And I remember we went, we were, went on a cruise and it was like the first time I felt so confident in my own skin and I was still very swollen. That's another thing. You are swollen for a while. so. The first like six weeks is your healing period, but after six weeks, like depending on everyone's different, you're still so swollen. And I remember being like, oh my God, like I'm a bigger pant size than I was before. And it was a good like three months for me before my swelling really went down. And by the summertime, cause I got it done in January. And by, I remember like July was the first time that I was like, oh wow, my like stomach's like flat. Um, so it does take some time depending on you. But before that, it felt like flat too. But I remember everyone was like, how many pant size did you go down? And I was like, 
none. Like, but I also used to squeeze in my pants. Now they just fit. And then after I would say I went down. Now I'm like really in between a six and an eight. Before I was in between an eight and a 10. So probably one. So just the confidence it gave me. And just like now going to the gym, like wearing leggings, not having that pooch, which is completely normal. Everyone has it. Like, but like for me, like I always had so much loose skin there and being able to wear a sports bra and just like a like nothing else, like wear a sports bra and leggings. Like that is something I never in 5 million years would have done. Just feeling way more confident in clothes. I feel like in myself, just seeing those results. And it just makes me want to like get stronger. It also helped me not focus on the scale as much because I feel like I always thought like, if I just lose five more pounds, like my stomach will be flat. My stomach was never going to be flat. I was always going to have that, that loose skin. You can't lose loose skin. It's just there. The only way to get rid of it is remove it and don't waste your money on creams. I tried every cream under the sun. I still have tons of loose skin under my arms here. Um, my armpit area, like my inner thighs, I have a lot of loose skin. It's just normal when you have weight loss like that. And I've tried every cream under the sun. Do not waste your money. Like none of them for me personally worked. I remember I went in for a consultation for cold sculpting and they were like, it's not going to work because you have so much loose skin. Like it's, it's not going to tighten that. And then after this, after my tummy tuck, I went in and had M sculpt done on the back of my thighs to tighten them. It didn't do anything to be honest. Like I didn't see any changes whatsoever. I think it was M sculpt. It was like a cool sculpting thing where like they put some like frequency on you and like it does a pulsing and it's supposed to like tight, tight and lift it and firm and like help loose skin. It did it. I'm going to wrap up this one year post Tommy Tuck. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this answered any questions. If it's something you're thinking about doing and you're doing it for yourself, for you, I mean, it, it was honestly the best decision I ever made, but it's not one to take lightly. It's scary but it's so worth it and I do wish I did it years ago but I also am happy I was in the good place like make sure to focus on like loving yourself first and just being in a good place like don't do this out of hatred for your body don't do it for anyone else do it when you're ready and I'm just so grateful that I was able to and I hope this helps any of you if it's something you're thinking about or if it's something you just got done and you're in the thick of it and you're like oh my gosh this is the worst it gets better I promise like I would do it again in a heartbeat. So it does, it does get better if you're in the thick of it. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below and I will see you in the next video.